and he said, Oh, Mr. Bumble, please come. He tried to murder me and Charlotte and Mrs. Sour Bear too. And please come there or else he's going to murder us again. But Oliver just did that first right. So Mr. Bumble got really furious. He took, yeah, he took a deep breath and screamed as loud as he could. And then he walked with a very angry Face. And Noah led him to the direction where Oliver Twist was locked, of course, in the cellar. And as soon as he got his first step in the door, Oliver kept banging out because he knew he was there because he heard the footsteps. And then he bammed the door really hard, but it was no use. It was just like doing a karate game, but actually he just did that because he needed to get out of there before they came. So, <laughs> Mr. Bumble tried to open that cellar, but actually it was too hard for him to open it too. So, Mr. Sowerberry heard the ruckus and then he rushed to find Oliver in the cellar. And Mr. Bumble, looking confused, banging the door. Okay, and as soon as he arrived, he gave him, he threw Mr. Bumble the keys, and then he caught it. And then he opened the cellar and saw Oliver in it, yelling and screaming. But he didn't know the door was already open. And he was sent and beat he was sent to be beaten by <laughs> by by Noah Claypool, Charlotte, Mrs. Sourberry, Mr. Bumble and Mr. Sourberry all all four of them beated Oliver beaten, Ten. beaten Oliver so, Noah Claypool, Charlotte, Mrs. Sourberry, Mr. Sourberry, and Mr. Bumble had, had beaten Oliver so badly, he got even more injured. It was like he was bleeding all over his body. So, Oliver, Oliver sat down after the fight. And you know what? He fainted. Uh, and he was really tired after all the punching, pinching, and beating. So he lay down to rest. And he was carried by Mr. Sourberry to his own room. And he rest there. Waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting <sighs> until morning rise came and he stretched. But that's not what you are gonna expect. This is what just happened. So when he was brought to bed, Oliver snuck out and brought all his stuff. He had one penny, a piece of bread, and some rough clothes. Yeah. And he set foot outside since it was really windy. He didn't even have long sleeve clothes. It was just a t-shirt, really old, torn with dust poop. And he stood up and started his journey. He walked. He walked. And he walked for miles. But actually, he had some breaks too. He used some old hay which he saw on the field. He made that to make a little hut for himself to sleep during the rains. And after the rains stopped, he continued his journey. He would sit on the shady trees and relax and say to himself, what a relaxing day. He enjoyed himself in the province. It was just like a province. But actually, it was just a little field. And you know how he ate? 
he saved a little piece of a big giant bread, which he stored in his bag, and a one penny so he can buy some water. But actually, he begged for water in some of the streets, who were kind enough to give him some. And he also had one tiny penny to buy something just in case what he needed. But that penny wasn't enough to buy him a big house. That's because one penny can't even buy you a very large house. He didn't buy any of that at all. You'll find out later. But first, I need to tell you, he enjoyed himself. So, he continued his journey after relaxing on the tree. And he noticed. He, was, he sat on a brick stone and he read. He sat down again and said, he had arrived to London. What a great news. And since he arrived to London, he is far away from Mr. Bumble, Mr. Sourberry, that evil Noah, and Charlotte, and of course what he didn't like the most, the cruel people. What I just said is what he didn't like to remember in his mind. So, he set foot How many miles? and he noticed that it was 70 miles to London. How independent Oliver was. He just walked by himself without his own parents carrying him. That's amazing. No one can walk for days, months, and weeks, and years to reach London for 70 miles. That's just amazing of him, right, everybody? <sighs> so, let me continue my story. As soon as he set foot in London, his bread was finished, and all the last thing he had is his old clothes. He wore them just to make himself warm, and he also took one of his pennies. Since the water was finished on the way, and he finished his bread for a quick snack, he used it to buy some bread. And after he received the bread, he noticed something in his mind. And he said, Oh, I have no money anymore. The clothes I've worn is just going to be worn out soon. And the bread, at least that's what I have to survive. So he ate the piece of bread. And he continued his journey. He went to a, he went to a public place. Or should I say, a place where a lot of people can gather. Like a park. But sadly... He wasn't allowed in his park. He was a chased away by the villagers. And no one likes to be chased by mean people. But a lot of kids like to be chased by nice friends, like when they play. But that wasn't actually a game. They were just chasing Oliver because they thought he was a new person there to steal something. And actually, he wasn't there to steal. He was just there to relax. Because he was just trying to recover from, from all the bruises they beated Oliver with. And they had so many of them. He looked like a, like a poor orphan with a lot of bruises. So the one kind enough to feed Oliver was was Alpha a gate Dodger. No, was a gatekeeper hmm? and an old lady who was already old. And as soon as he finished all the things he offered them, he saw a bit of stairs on the roads like bricks and then he lay down to rest himself because that place was covered in hay and that hay was soft enough to make Oliver satisfied. So he closed his eyes and started to sleep. Like this. 
<sighs> but he was disturbed by someone. And the one who disturbed him was a boy named Jack Dawkins. Jack Dawkins was a boy. He was actually called the Artful the Artful Dodger. And Artful because he was really smart because to get what he wanted. And Dodger because he was really good at, at it without getting seen. <laughs> So they continued. Wow. Not so well. the artful dodger said, Huh, you must be starving. Here. Not very long hair like this. I know I'll give you some food, shelter, and anything you would need, said Jack Dawkins, or the artful dodger. And he led him to a nice, I mean, an old house, which actually Oliver thought was nice. Thank you. And me too, because I touch socks. If it's soapy water, you can wash your hands in a second. And he was brought, he was brought he was brought um, to a nice house, but actually he just thought it was nice, but actually it was covered with rats, dirt, <coughs> and cracks How in the wall. How come they have so much money, but they still have a poor house? Um, that's because Fagin, the owner of that secret academy house, which he has a bunch of thieves in there, um, he, he treats children like that, but actually, what you said, I'm going to answer that. He, he, does, he has a lot of watches and jewels and a poor house because he could have everything in that nice house. How come they steal wallets but they're not still buying a nice house? That's because if, if they see, if they see Fagin, if they see Fagin have that nice house, First thing, Fagin will be really upset to have his precious things go away, even though he'll have everything he wants. And secondly, he might be noticed by the poor people, and then the poor people will say, Huh? You may just stole that stuff just to get rich? You treated us so badly, and he would know that they pickpocket. They were pickpocketers, and they would own his house and everything, his cash and everything. Could you give me a glass of water? Oh, okay, as you say so. And, and he was well fed there. He was served some, some gruel like he was served in an orphanage. What nice one. <laughs> and some meat. Do you drink water? Wow. And some meat for him to be satisfied. So, after eating the food which made Oliver whole, made Oliver sleep. <laughs> yeah. And then he and a girl named Nancy was fine. Yeah, was kind and tucked Oliver to bed. And Oliver stretched his arms to close his eyes, and he did. He smoked, ah. and he relaxed, and he had a good time. And he thought to himself, "Oh, I think I should stay here." But hardly he no, he didn't know that he was not gonna have an easy life in that day. So. Oliver closed his eyes and uh, sleep. And he felt so comfy, no matter how hard his life. He thought that was the first thing a, a, a person would ever do in his life. That's the first act of kindness he ever saw. And in the morning, uh, he, he was just asleep. And... 
And you know what? Fagin was awake. Well, the two boys, Jack Dawkins, or actually the Artful Dodger, and Charlie Bates, one of his companions, set foot wow, this to start pickpocketing. And what? But first, I forgot to tell you guys that before, after, before, I mean, sorry. Okay, so, before um, I tell you something, this is what I want to say to you. Uh, Fagin took out, took out a secret thing. You will be really wondering what it is. So he sat down, he pulled out the wrap, and he took a jewelry box, which was shiny as water. And, and hardly he didn't know that Oliver was just pretending to be asleep. And then Fagin said, ah, what fine men they were. Loyal at the end. They never told the priest about us in our secret place. Or nor they told about old Fagin. That's what he said. And then he took out six more silver and gold watches and he said ah oh, my favorite things i can never let you go the sparkly things he took out some other things like, ah! yeah like necklaces like what my sister's wearing here or shiny pearly bracelets like with yeah like that one and shiny pearly bracelets like this one with different kinds of colors see and that's what the most precious thing to Fagin. jewels like this bracelet is part of jewels so that's what Fagin will extremely take from my pocket if i were there and he would take my sister's pretty necklace like he took out in the box. It was a golden locket, silver kind, and watches in the locket, and anything. And he would definitely steal my sister's beautiful necklace, what my mother gave me, if she was there. Because what's more important to him, not the boys, except the jewels he had in his treasure box. But hardly he didn't know that Oliver was watching. So, as soon as he was looking at the finest pearly bracelet he saw, and the nice necklaces and lockets, he turned around and saw Oliver watching him at all, like this. And then, and then Fagin said, <gasps> And then he took out the knife and he said, Aah! sorry. And then, and then he said, and he ran to Oliver and said, did you see what I took out? So, and he said, no, sir. No. And he said, no, sir, I didn't see. Did you see it? And then he said, no, 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 I didn't see. But, and then, here you can have this. You don't break it, eh? Okay. Okay. This one's And and he said, "Were you awake earlier?" And then Oliver said, "Oh, don't do that, okay?" Yeah, I do. And he said, "No, sir, I wasn't." Give me spray. No, sir, I wasn't. Oh. Awake that time, and then I get it very good. And then he put down the bread knife and said, and he turned back to the old kind gentleman. Ah, oh, don't worry, dear. I'm just trying to scare you. Okay. interrupt you but I'll continue so I'll repeat so Fagin turned back to the nice old gentleman again and he said 
<sighs> it's okay, my dear. I was just trying to scare you. So Oliver felt relieved that he spared his life. And, and then they were interrupted by Charlie Bates and the Artful Dodger, or called Jack Dawkins. Wow, like, uh, like, or like, or like, uh, or Charlie like, Bates. Or no, or like. Okay. So, Fagin told Oliver, watch and enjoy the show. Okay. And actually, there was a great show. Can I borrow this, please? Okay. And this is how the show looked like. Stand up. You will be my example. So, okay. <laughs> example, like they were going to pickpocket and they were going to show Oliver how to pickpocket like this. Fagin would walk around. Example, you are Fagin. Don't worry. And no. Don't worry. Okay, I'll be Fagin then. And then Fagin was walking. And then Charlie Bates an artful dodger would take the precious gold chain out of his pocket. That's how they pickpocket. Come on. Oh! <laughs> and they took the golden chain out of Fagin. And that's the example how. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm just checking. Okay. Yeah. So as Oliver watched the show, seeing Fagin dance around, and the two boys would try to sneak to his pocket without getting seen. Especially, Oliver thought that that Jack Dawkins or the Artful Dodger was more better than Charlie Bates. They did a coin flipping while getting a gold coin out of his pocket, like this. Yay! They were really good, but actually, Oliver enjoyed this show, but hardly he didn't know that they were gonna teach him how to pick pockets. But said, Fagin said, you can play too. And when you're old enough, you could play it for real. But Oliver was shocked to hear this. He was shocked, like in horror. But said, Oh no, sir, you're really kind, but actually I don't want to learn how to pick pockets. I just want to see you two do it. But, Fagin said, don't worry, my child, you'll do it. You can do it. And you'll be a great man if you learn how to. No, you won't be a great man if you learn to. Okay, and actually Oliver thought, how can I be a great man if I learn how to steal? So he he agreed to a fagin, but actually he was still sad because he was an honest boy and he didn't want to be dishonest at all. Oh, you can buy that. Okay. And you can buy that. So um, where was I again? Charles Dickens. I mean Charles Dick Chickens. I mean Charles Dickens. Yeah. Oh, not that. So, one day, Oliver was good enough. He was fat, strong, and everything. What? Fat? Yes. Okay. And he was, he was the perfect amount of size. Wait. And perfect for pickpocketing. He was the youngest of the group. Charlie Bates was a bit older. And the oldest of the group was Fagin and some others. Like Nancy and Sykes. Bill Spikes. Bill Sykes? But he's bad. Bill Sykes, yeah. He's one of the characters, guys. Oh, one of the characters like... Okay, so... I... And... Bill Sykes is one 
of the evil characters and you will see his evil thoughts in the next part I'm gonna say. But it will be a little long to say. And Bill Sykes had a dog named Bullseye. Bullseye is one of a cute little dog. And that dog was actually friends with Nancy. Nancy was a kind, sweet little girl. She had a boyfriend named Bill Sykes, and actually Bill Sykes is the husband of Nancy. Nancy. Yeah, Nancy every day would dance around with Bullseye watching her, Bullseye. and she would dance in glee. But when, but when it's time to do pickpocketing time, she would get serious and start to pickpocket. But actually, she wasn't that good because they thought that boys were really good in pickpocketing. And that was kind of true because Charlie Gates were really good. Arthur Dodger, the best. Bill Spikes, really great. But Nancy, not that quite, that's why that's why she started to do some good stuff, like help Oliver. So, one day, Oliver sets foot out. And then, and then Oliver walked silently and they said he wasn't allowed to question at all. So, Charlie Bates and and Artful Dodger, or as known as Jack Dawkins, said to him, Why say that? Yeah, because his name is actually that Jack Dawkins. Okay, so he, he told Oliver to be quiet because they were going to rob. So they snuck, and snuck, and snuck, and snuck until they reached to the big, tall, fierce man named Mr. Brownlow. And Mr. Brownlow is looks wealthy. He had yellow, I mean gold glasses, a silver watch. And he wrote and he read a nice book. Very seriously. And and, and come on and, the, me play. and artful dodger and and Charlie Bates 